Hello everybody, this is Mika Seppälä. This video is an introduction to power series. Power series can be viewed as polynomials of an infinite degree. Taking finite parts of these polynomials, that is finite partial sums of the corresponding power series, we may approximate functions with normal polynomials to as high a precision as necessary. Here in this picture you see the graph of the sine function, that's the black curve, that is covered by the red curve, which is the graph of a polynomial of degree 15 approximating the sine function. The approximation is good near the origin and fails when we go far away. However, increasing the degree of the approximating polynomial, this approximation can be made to work anywhere. This is very powerful because it is, of course, much easier to deal with polynomials than with complicated functions like the sine function. This is why power series are important. To start with, I will show an easy way to find power series expansions for rational functions. In order to do that, I remind you first of the long polynomial division. Consider the rational function 3 times x cubed plus 2 times x squared minus 11 times x minus 8, and that divided by x squared minus 4. Now, the degree of the denominator 2 is less than that of the numerator, which is 3, therefore we may perform the division. We do that by writing the denominator x squared minus 4 to the left of the numerator, as shown here. And um, then we search for a monomial such that when we multiply the leading term of the denominator, that is x squared, by that monomial, we get the leading term of the numerator, which is 3 times x cubed. Now, if we multiply x squared by 3 times x, we get 3 times x cubed. We write the product of 3 times x and x squared minus 4 below the numerator. And we write 3 times x above the numerator as shown here. Then we have to subtract the product 3 times x cubed minus 12 times x from the numerator. We do that so that we change the signs of this product 3 times x cubed minus 12 times x and we add then up this and with the numerator. So we get that the remaining numerator is now 2 times x squared plus x minus 8 and this means that we have found the presentation 3 times x cubed plus 2 times x squared minus 11 times x minus 8 divided by x squared minus 4 is 3 times x plus 2 times x squared plus x minus 8 and that divided by x squared minus 4. Now still in this presentation on the right, the rational function can be further divided because the degree of the numerator is the same as the degree of the denominator. So one more step is needed. Next, we search for a monomial such that when we multiply the leading term of the denominator, that is x squared by that monomial, we get um, 2 times x squared, which is the leading term of the current remainder. So that term is, of course, simply 2, a constant. So when we multiply x squared minus 4 by 2, we get 2 times x squared minus 8. Then we change the signs of this product, and we add that up with the remainder that we had. 2 times x squared and minus 2 times x squared cancel out, and so do negative 8 and plus 8 and we are left with x, which means that we have found the presentation 3 times x cubed plus 2 times x squared minus 11 times x minus 8, and that divided by x squared minus 4 equals 3 times x plus 2 plus x divided by x squared minus 4. This is the ordinary long polynomial division. Polynomial division can be used to find power series expansions of rational functions. Consider the simple rational function 1 divided by 1 minus x, and so on here on the lower left corner. The degree of the 
denominator is 1 and that of the numerator is 0. Therefore, we cannot perform the normal polynomial division anymore for this rational function. Instead, we use something which is called the inverted polynomial division. In the normal long polynomial division, we multiply the denominator so that the leading terms cancel out. Here we multiply the denominator by monomials so that the trailing terms, that is the lowest degree terms, cancel out. So we write the denominator and numerator as before next to each other in this uh, way shown here. 1 minus x to the left of uh, the numerator 1. Then we look for a monomial such that when we multiply 1 minus x with that monomial, we get the trailing term of the numerator, which is 1. So 1 minus x multiplied by the monomial 1 gives you 1 minus x, and 1 minus x has as its trailing term 1. Therefore, we write 1 above this uh, line on the top, and uh, we multiply 1 minus x by 1, and we write the product below this 1. Next, we subtract 1 minus x from 1. We do that by changing the signs and then adding up. 1 and negative 1 cancel out, and we are left with x. Next, we look for a monomial such that when we multiply the trailing term of 1 minus x with that monomial, we get the trailing term of the current remainder, which is x. And that monomial is, of course, x. So we multiply 1 minus x by x, we get x minus x squared. We subtract that from x, and we get the remainder x squared. Now we have found the representation 1 divided by 1 minus x equals 1 plus x plus x squared divided by 1 minus x. Now the remainder at this stage is x squared and we have to multiply the trailing term of 1 minus x by x squared to get a product whose trailing term is x squared. When we do that then the remainder is going to be x cubed and we get the representation 1 divided by 1 minus x equals 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed over 1 minus x. This can be continued. Repeating the inverted division algorithm n times, one gets 1 divided by 1 minus x equals 1 plus x plus x squared plus and so forth plus x to the power n plus the remainder x to the power n plus 1 divided by 1 minus x. Now, if the absolute value of x is less than 1, then x to the power n plus 1 approaches 0 as n grows. Therefore, we conclude that if the absolute value of x is less than 1, 1 divided by 1 minus x equals 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed plus and so forth. This is the summation formula for a geometric series with the first term 1, and the ratio of two subsequent terms x. This is also a power series expansion for the rational function 1 divided by 1 minus x. And this inverted polynomial division can be applied to find power series expansions for any rational functions, that is, for any function which is of the form a polynomial divided by another polynomial. The expansion 1 divided by 1 minus x equals 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed plus and so forth is called the power series of the rational function 1 divided by 1 minus x. Let us look at the graphs of the function 1 divided by 1 minus x and those of the polynomials 1 plus x plus x squared and 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed plus x to the fourth plus x to the fifth. These polynomials are beginning parts of this power series for the rational function 1 divided by 1 minus x. The graph of the rational function 1 divided by 1 minus x is the black curve shown here in this picture, 
and the graph of the polynomial 1 plus x plus x squared is the blue curve and that of the polynomial of degree 5 is the red curve shown here. Clearly the blue curve and the red curve approximate the graph of this function 1 divided by 1 minus x pretty well near the origin but then they fail to work when x gets further away from the origin. That is to be expected because this power series expansion that we obtain for this function 1 divided by 1 minus x is valid only if the absolute value of x is less than 1. The function 1 divided by 1 minus x, however, is defined for all values of x different from 1. Therefore, one cannot expect that this power series expansions would work when the absolute value of x is greater than 1, that is when x is less than negative 1 or larger than 1. And this is what one sees in this picture. One can find power series expansions for other functions too. Here is uh, the graph of the function sine of x, that is the black curve. And that of the polynomial x minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the fifth over 5 factorial. This polynomial is the beginning part of the power series expansion for the function sine of x. And we see that um, the graph of this polynomial, which is the red curve, approximates the graph of the sine function pretty well near the origin, but fails to approximate when the absolute value of x gets larger than pi over 2. Now, taking higher polynomials approximating the sine function, that is, taking higher partial sums of the power series expansion for the sine function, we get a better approximation. Here is the graph of the sine function and that of the polynomial x minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the fifth over 5 factorial minus x to the seventh over 7 factorial plus and so forth all the way until minus x to the 15th over 15 factorial. That is the red curve and this approximation works pretty well from negative 2 times pi to 2 times pi and then fails to work beyond that interval. If we take a still higher degree polynomial, we get a better approximation. Here is the graph of the 23rd partial sum of a power series expansion for the sine function, that is the red curve, and that of the sine function, which is the black curve. The red curve now covers almost completely the black curve, and we see only parts of the black curve in the end of this interval shown here. This means that this approximation is already pretty good. A series of the types, summation k from 0 to the infinity, a k times x to the power k, that is a0 plus a1 times x plus a2 times x squared plus and so forth, is called a power series. Here the coefficients a k are numbers and x is the variable. If this series summation k from 0 to the infinity a k times x to the power k converges for some values of x, then it represents a function. An important question regarding power series is to find what function is represented by a given series, and then conversely, given a function, find a power series representation for that function. Clearly, with power series, one can compute just like with polynomials, and for complicated functions, computing with polynomials is much simpler than computing with the functions themselves. That is why power series are important and useful. Most elementary functions can be presented as power series. Here in this picture, one sees the plot of the sine function and that of the polynomial of degree 23, which starts x minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the power 5 over 5 factorial minus and so forth. This polynomial of 23 is a partial sum of the power series expansion for the function sine of x. Clearly, it is simpler to work with polynomials than with sine of x. And this applies to practically all elementary functions, which may be pretty complicated. They can be replaced by the power series expansions 
and in many cases we can work with partial sums of these power series instead of these functions themselves and we can perform complicated computations by replacing these functions with partial sums of the power series. This is why power series are important.